I have a pretty ambitious February TBR. <laughs> I feel like I do this every February. It's like the shortest month of the year, but for some reason I always try to read the most amount of books in February. I don't know why, I don't know what's going on in my head every single year where I'm like, oh, I can definitely read like at least a dozen books in February. <laughs> Typically I am pretty good at reading a lot in February. I mean, the best reading month I've ever had where I read like over 20 books, that was in February. It was a couple years ago, but it was in February. But yeah, I always do the most in February, so I'm really excited to share my TBR with you all. Uh, last month, I didn't really do very well sticking to my TBR, but that was mostly because I have been in such an audiobook mood, and most of the books that I chose for last month, I didn't have access to an audiobook for them, so... It was kind of my fault, it was totally on me, but this month I decided that I wanted to pick out some books that I definitely knew I had access to an audiobook. I think there might only be a few books on this TBR that I don't have an audiobook for, but the majority of them I definitely 100% have an audiobook, so I think I'll be okay this month. <laughs> I'm also not really going to talk about the books from last month's TBR that I didn't finish because obviously those are still definitely in my rotation of like books that I'm reading currently, so I don't really want to go back and rehash all of those books. So for First of all, I am currently reading Gods of Jade and Shadow by Silvia Moreno Garcia, and I am reading that on Libby as an audiobook. I have been loving this book today. Like, I've been reading it mostly today. I read a little bit of it yesterday, but really today has been dedicated to me reading that book, and so far it is absolutely amazing. I guess I really shouldn't be so surprised because I have loved every other Silvia Moreno Garcia book that I've ever read. I think for me, I really enjoy fantasy especially adult fantasy that isn't like super centered around action, if that makes any sense. I think the kind of fantasy that I gravitate towards in YA fantasy is definitely more action based rather than in adult fantasy I tend to gravitate towards more romantic fantasy. I wouldn't call it like fantasy romance because that has like a different connotation. <laughs> to me, like a fantasy romance is more like a new adult fantasy romance, similar to like Jennifer L. Armentrout. That's very different than what I'm kind of talking about, which is more focused on the fantasy element rather than the romance element, where I feel like in those other kind of books, it's more like focused on the romance with fantasy elements. I am also currently reading All the Feels by Olivia Dade on my Kindle, and I am loving that one also. I'm not super far into that one, but I am really enjoying it, which is fun. And I don't know, I just love this little universe that it has with like this hit TV show. It's like a fantasy, uh, Greek mythology kind of TV show that's like super popular, and I'm loving it. It's so much fun. I also have a couple of other audiobooks out from Libby that I want to like just quickly mention. So I have Undercover Bromance by Lissa K. Adams. That's the second book in the series. And then I also have This Woven Kingdom by Tahata Mafi. It's the first book in a fantasy series from Tahata Mafi, which is super exciting because I love Shatter Me. I'm a Shatter Me girly. And then I also have The Death of Vivek Oji by Akweke Amezi. And then I also have Forbidden by Beverly Jenkins. I really want to get into Beverly Jenkins because I have recently realized how much I love historical romance. And I know that Beverly Jenkins is like a huge author in historical romance. So I figure I might as well read some books from her. I feel like I'd be doing myself a disservice as a reader if I didn't pick up one of her books. So yeah, those are all the ones that I have out on Libby currently. So now we'll get into like my actual physical TBR. The first book that I want to read in February is Sunland Ascends by Josiah Bancroft. And I have had this book for a couple of months now. I got recommended it because I was asking for books that had a similar vibe to Caraval or The Night Circus because I love those books. I love the vibe that it has similarly to The Crown's Game. Um, I talk about those books literally all the time. <laughs> if you're new to my channel, I talk about those books a lot. 
but I, a few months ago, maybe even like almost a year ago, I asked for recommendations for those kind of books and this one got recommended to me. And I've put it off for a while, but I don't want to put it off any longer. I'm so excited to read this book. And also recently, Reagan from Peru's Project talked about it and I was like, okay, I think that's pushing me over the edge. I need to read this book. This one also is kind of giving me the vibes of A Winter's Promise which I read last year and loved. I'm still reading the series. But basically it seems like this main character Thomas has recently gotten married and now his bride has been stolen and taken away and he has to go find her. So this sounds really exciting. I hope I really enjoy it. I think it's part of a duology or it might be part of a series. I'm not really sure, but I know that there is a second book. So I am really excited about this. The next book is an arc that I recently received from the author and that is The Undead Truth of Us by Brittany S. Lewis. And Brittany was very kind enough to send me this arc and I am so so excited about it. I am absolutely pumped. <laughs> We're friends on TikTok and so she reached out to me and was like, hey do you want an arc of my book? And I was like, of course I do. So I'm really excited to get to it this month and I've heard so many great things about it. It sounds really, really interesting. I really love this part of the synopsis on the back. It says, in this surrealist journey of grief, fear, and hope, Brittany S. Lewis's debut novel explores love, zombies, and everything in between in an intoxicating amalgam of the real and the fantastic. It sounds so exciting. I've only read one other book that had zombies in it, which was Undead Girl Gang, and I loved that book. So I have a feeling that I'll also really enjoy this one. This next book is one that I have been recommended so many times and I recently purchased and that is Iron Widow by Ziren J. Zhao and I am so so excited to get to this book. Literally I cannot contain my excitement. This is so out of my comfort zone too because I am not a sci-fi reader. I think I've mentioned this so many times on my channel but I don't really read a lot of sci-fi. It's definitely a genre that I don't necessarily gravitate towards very often unless it's like a Star Wars book and even then I haven't really read many of the Star Wars books that I own. Um, Sci-fi really freaks me out and like makes me a little intimidated. <laughs> Um, I'm not a science girly. I have never been a science girly. I was very bad at science in high school, middle school. I think the best grade, well, I did get a pretty good grade in physics, but I feel like that was just kind of a fluke. Mostly I get like C's in science classes. <laughs> not very good at science. It doesn't make sense in my brain. I respect it. Doesn't make sense to me. But I'm hoping that because everyone has loved this book so much, it's been so hyped, I might also get on the hype train. You never know. I might absolutely love this book. So I'm really excited. It sounds like it has a lot of like really interesting dynamics within it. I think I've read the back quote on this book before, but I want to read it again. It says, like its ferocious heroine, Iron Widow is brutal, bloodthirsty, and full of rage. Zetian's fight to shatter patriarchal definitions of power makes for a truly thrilling read and Julie C. Dow said that so I'm super excited about this book. Also Julie C. Dow is another author that I really want to read from. She wrote Forest of a Thousand Lanterns which I actually own and I was thinking of reading it this month but I'm not sure. It might be one that I read towards the end of the month if I have some time but we'll see how it goes. The next book is one that I keep seeing the audiobook on Hoopla and I own it and I'm just like, I need to read it now. I'm so excited for it. And that is Black Buck by Matteo Ascarapur. And I have heard so many things about this book. Like I remember when it first came out and there was so much hype around it. And ever since then, I have just been wanting to read this book. It's been right there in the back of my mind. Whenever I see it on my shelf, I'm like, oh yeah, I need to read that book. On the inside flap, it says, for fans of Sorry to Bother You and The Wolf of Wall Street, a blazing satirical debut novel about a young man given a shot at stardom as the lone black salesman at a mysterious, cult-like, and wildly successful startup where nothing is as it seems. I'm really excited about this book. Just from the way that it's described right there, it sounds right up my alley. I actually just recently read the book Cultish, which I talk about in my wrap up. And that one really dealt with more like 
pop culture and corporations that have like a very cult-like atmosphere. So I think that this might be something that I really enjoy and am interested in. The next book is one that I'm actually currently in the middle of and that is Kingdom of Souls by Rena Barron and I'm so glad that I have finally started to read this book. I actually started reading it as an audiobook but then I decided that I wasn't really feeling the audiobook but I still wanted to read this so I just switched over to the physical copy and I've definitely gotten further in it than I would have with the audiobook. I'm currently on page 89 and I'm really intrigued by the narrative style of this book. It's definitely very different than other books that I've read within the same genre and I just don't think that it's very well suited for an audiobook format. That's why I decided to read it physically and I'm really really enjoying it. I think I've heard that the romance takes center stage throughout this book so I'm really intrigued to see where that goes as well. The second to last book that I have on my TBR is Anne Anna Kay by Jenny Lee and I've had this book for quite a while since February of 2020. <laughs> I definitely need to read this because I guess it's been exactly two years since I've gotten this book. <laughs> it's so weird to think that it's currently 2022, February 2022. It, like please let's 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 stop time for just a little bit and this is also another one that I have the audiobook to so that's really good <laughs> on the inside flap it says at 17 she is at the top of Manhattan and Greenwich society even if she prefers the company of her horses and dogs she has the perfect if perfectly boring boyfriend and she has always made her Korean American father proud even if he can be a bit controlling. As her friends struggle with the pitfalls of teenage life, Anna always seems to sail gracefully above it all. That is, until the night she meets Alexia Vronsky. A notorious playboy, Alexia is everything Anna is not, but he has never been in love until he meets Anna, and maybe she hasn't either. As Alexia and Anna are pulled irresistibly together, she has to decide how much of her life she is willing to let go to be with him. I forgot that this was an Anna Karenina retelling. <laughs> oh my god, that's so embarrassing. I love Anna Karenina as well. I've never read the book. I'm too scared of the book. I'm scared of literally any Leo Tolstoy book. I was going to buy War and Peace the last time I was at Barnes and Noble and I held it in my hands. I held every single copy of that book I could find and I was like, I can't do this. <laughs> I was so intimidated by War and Peace and even Anna Karenina. It's long. Like these are long books and I don't know. I don't know if I can do like an actual read of either of those books but I can definitely do a retelling of those books. So I'm really excited. I forgot that this was an Anna Karenina retelling which makes me my heart it makes my heart sore. I love that movie so much and if you don't know what movie I'm talking about it's the one with Keira Knightley. It's iconic and Aaron Taylor Johnson is also in that movie. We love him to death. Ugh, I, I'm so excited about this book. This just renewed my excitement. I can't believe I forgot that this is an Anna Karenina retelling. What the heck am I doing? Alright so the very last book on my TBR is probably one that I'm the most excited about because it is such a staple in the book community. I can't believe I've never read it. I've owned it for a while. We need to read it and that is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. I know there are so many mixed emotions and mixed opinions on this book but I feel like I need to read it. I need to read it at least once and then I can just like stop thinking about it. This has been on my shelf for a while. I got it as an add-on from Book of the Month because it's really really difficult to find this book as a hardcover, which I would have preferred the original hardcover because it's really cool. It kind of has like this um, see-through dust jacket rather than like the typical dust jacket, but whatever. It's not that big of a deal. I probably should have just bought it as a paperback, but 
I really love hardcovers. I'm sorry. I am I love hardcovers. So I had to get it from Book of the Month. But yeah, I'm so excited to read this. I also have the audiobook for it. So I think I'll probably try to both read it physically and as an audiobook just to see which one I prefer. I don't feel like I need to really describe this book to any of you. It's Dark Academia. It's like the OG Dark Academia. It's such a staple within that subgenre and I feel like I just I need to read it this year. I've been putting it off forever. I need to finally read it and see what I feel about it, what I think, and hopefully I'll really love it. I don't know. I have no expectations for this book because I genuinely don't know if I'm going to like this book or not. All right, so like I said, a very, very ambitious February TBR. So many books to get through. I'm really, really excited to get through all of them. And hopefully I'll have some new favorites this month like I did last month. I had an amazing reading month in January. It was just so good. I read so many books, found so many new favorites. So I'm really hoping that this month is the same. Down below in the comments, let me know what books you're planning to read in February. If you have any that you're super excited about, let me know. And I hope you all enjoyed this video. And if you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also go ahead and follow me on Instagram Instagram, Twitter, Goodreads, TikTok, Storygraph. All the links are going to be down below and I will see you all in my next video. Bye!